uh, A-frame assembly and your hitch. So first of all you've got your, your standard sort of hitch style there so when you want to put it on the vehicle just squeeze that lever there, lift it up and it'll just sit on the tab there. So you can then bring your vehicle back, use your jockey wheels to, to wind it down onto the vehicle um, and then once it's on lift that up, drop it down and then you've got your E-pin there that uh, pushes through like that and just locks it in place um, and then basically just the, the same to take it off just in the reverse action um, directly behind that is your parking brake so pull that up and then lift that lever up and then that's that's the parking brake off um, to lock it on push it down and then just pull it back until it locks into place um, you've uh, you've got two jockey wheels on this um, they're just a, a wind up and wind down system and then there's a little pull lever there um, to pull them out and then you can flip them horizontally as well um, standard safety chain with a, a d-shackle there uh, and a, a standard seven pin uh, plug as well for your trailer lights so just behind your, your A-frame there, uh, you've got your, your front locker. So there's this little key here um, that just sits just inside the doorway normally, but that's the key that opens these up. So lift the wee tab, turn that, oh, which I've just locked it, um, but you turn those, one on each side, and that gives you access to your main locker here. Um, so you've got gas bottle there with your connection, it's sort of a more of a utility storage you've got your main power cable there and there's a, a winder in there for the stabilizer legs um, these are more of a utility storage don't store anything in there you don't want sort of getting damp or or, uh, or dusty um, but uh, yeah that's sort of your main main sort of utility area so this is the uh, the housing for your water so take cap off there and then you can fill your water system up um, so you've got an onboard tank so you can fill that up and it just looks up there nice and clearly labelled with water um, just behind that is your mains power cable lead so that flips down you do actually have a sort of a I'll just take that end off um, so that bit lives inside here so that pushes in there and then you can flip your, your, uh, your latch up sits in there that comes up um, clips onto there so they do have a wee groove which corresponds with each one and then just clips in there there's a little groove at the bottom of the door here so you can put that in there and lock the door um, just keeps the weather and that out of there um, so that's your power connection and then directly behind that um, this is the water heater unit um, so this is the the exhaust outlet basically so when that's running on on gas you will get quite hot air coming out of there uh, but that's that's quite normal that's standard operation um, just be aware that it can get quite hot but just behind your wheels on the same side as your power lead um, you've got your waste outlet connection there so there's a oh, if I take those pins out take the wee pins out those little bits flip open like that and that comes off so that gives you your, your drain point um, and then you've got your, your other hose there so that actually is connected up in there as well there is a shut off valve um, so if the system is is still full and you need to drain it you can uh, shut that valve off as well um, but that's your waste outlet system so on the other corner of your van this hose actually clips up um, onto those wee clips and you'll notice there's a, a plastic tube that runs right through to the other side um, so that uh, first part of the hose I showed you with the the cam lock coupler um, that can actually stay on there and you can pull this hose right out um, on the other side so it gives you you know a nice long piece of hose to put into a, a dump station or something like that um, otherwise you can just use that that other outlet and run it into a, a barrel or anything like that if you don't want to move the van. So this, um, this is on the same side as your entry door. Uh, undo that and this gives you access to fill the uh, fresh tank for your toilet. 
Um, so it just depends on the model. They generally take about 8 to 10 litres in this tank. Um, there's also a pink liquid which goes in there. Um, the pink liquid's designed to help keep the pump lubricated and it also helps keep things smelling nice as well. Um, it is just a visual reference for when it's full, so it'll just the water will just sit in this wee trough so you know it's nice and full. Uh, and you can, uh, you can lock that up. Directly underneath it is your waste kitty. So, to remove the waste kitty, there's the wee lever there. You lift that up, and that slides out like that. Uh, that button, this slider, oh, and this one here, they're pretty much operated from inside the dam, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, this one's just like a little ear release, so you can press that if it's hard to get the, the cap off. Um, the cap turns, uh, sorry, the spout turns around and your cap will come off like that. Um, you will see there is little measurements on there. Um, there's a blue liquid which goes in this tank, um, so this just helps when you're, uh, you're putting the liquid in, so you can measure that. Um, the blue liquid helps break everything down, um, and it also helps get things smelling nice as well. Once you're ready to go, that just pushes back round, slides back in there, just make sure it clicks in and uh, you're good to go. Um, one other thing to know is there's a little drain bung here in the top, so that is designed to be able to drain your fresh tank. Um, so if you're storing the van over winter, you know, or for long periods of time, uh, it's a good idea to drain that top tank. So one, it keeps the pump from being submersed in water for a long time, and to it also it stops anything you know bursting or freezing in there and causing any damage this unit here is just inside your door um, this is your gas powered room heater uh, so if you want to just run the fan on its own so just to circulate you know cool air just pick it that way and then just adjust your flow from there um, but to actually run the heater side you have it right on the, the lower setting you can Flick it to the gas symbol and then keep turning it until this light comes on. Um, once that's on, it has about a 15 second um, purge system that it runs. Um, once that's done its course, it then should click, kick into life and you'll get the, the button on this side light up. Um, so as you can see, the other lights come on. Um, you will hear it sort of kick into life at the front of the van. Um, so you hear sort of like a, a fan noise going and um, that's your room heater going on gas and then obviously just adjust your uh, temperature from there. Just down under your seating here um, you've got your main 12 volt battery isolator so turn that off and you'll get, get no 12 volt in the van. Um, turn that back on and you should be good to go. Um, you do have a, a little voltmeter here so it's quite a good quick reference. This switch is just to turn that voltmeter on and off, um, so you don't have to have it running the whole time. You can just come in, check that it's okay, and then flip that bat off, uh, back off. Um, but yeah, just your main one there is the 12 volt battery isolator. Beside your oven here, uh, this is your um, power switch to run your water heater on gas. So flip that on, it'll do its own thing. If this lights up, that means that it's not working so either your gas isn't turned on or or you've run out of gas so if you do get that light um, lighting up turn it off go and check your system um, come back in switch it back on and it, it should kick into life and, and go um, you can run this system on mains power as well um, you'll have a, there's a little book that um, comes with the van that runs into more detail on uh, what you've got to do on the outside. Um, there's a little switch inside the outside compartment that needs to be um, basically activated so it can be done um, but it is it is a slightly more detailed process um, but that's to run your water heater on gas. Directly underneath that is the switch for your water pump so when you put all your water hooked up um, you can come in and turn your water pump on there. Just by your kitchen and by the bed area, um, this is your tank sort of level gauge. So you, there's a little test button there, so you can press that and it tells you what level each tank's at. Um, so it's just a good quick reference that you can come in and, and check what your tank levels are at. So under your seating, uh, down beside your 
your battery box in that. Um, this little unit is your solar controller. Um, so it sort of it does its own thing, you don't really have to worry about it, but it is good, it will give you a quick reference on where your battery's sitting at as well. Um, <clears throat> so that is, yeah, it's directly from your solar panel into your battery, so it's a, it's a good measure of what, uh, what your levels are sitting at. So these are the controls for your fridge, uh, on and off, so push that on. <clears throat> this one here just adjusts your, your temperature and you just cycle through those to what you want um, and then you've got your input selector there so oh, sorry so mains power gas and that one there I think is a automatic one which switches between uh, either or so if you um, don't have your power hooked up it'll automatically switch to gas um, but yeah, your main two there are your mains power and your gas operated. And then to turn it all off is just to press that. So this is your range top and oven system. So you've got your glass panel which lifts up there. And your four gas burners on top. Um, there is, you know, clear, nice and clearly indicated on which burner's what. Very similar to a barbecue, so push them in. Turn it around to the large flame setting, hold that in. And then you've got your little igniter switch there. So this igniter switch does uh, all of them, so it uh, it will do those for the air, your grill and your oven. Um, but yeah, you hold that in, fit your switch, once it's lit you're good to go, and just adjust your flame from there. Um, this one operates the grill, and this one here operates the oven underneath. Um, they're all the same, they're all push and turn, and then hit that button, all gas operated. So. You've got your grill grill in there, so it lights up along the top. Uh, probably a little bit hard to see, but um, you will see the flames going when that lights. Uh, and then directly underneath that is your oven. Um, and you also have a, a light in your oven there as well, so nice and easy to see when you're cooking. Uh, one thing to remember with your range top is just make sure these wire um, sort of baskets or cages are, are nice and cool to the touch before you put the glass panel back down. Um, <clears throat> it just it has been known in the past that um, if these are still quite hot and you put the glass panel down it has been known to shatter the glass. Um, so just a good idea to, to make sure they're nice and cool. This is the inside of your uh, toilet system. So you've got your um, bowl there. The bowl does rotate so you can move that around and make more room or more leg room if you need to. Um, there's a little grey lever right down the side um, that opens the slider to the waste caddy um, so you can uh, flush everything away and then close that off. Um, just make sure that's in the closed position uh, before you go to remove the waste caddy. Um, they're designed to only be removed when it's when that slide is closed. Um, so if you try to uh, remove it while it's open you'll find it'll get stuck. Um, <clears throat> so just make sure that's closed. And then to flush the toilet there's just this uh, push lever here so that pushes up and down and flushes your water into the bowl. For your uh, TV system, for your satellite system, there's a little switch here so that needs to be pushed down in that position before you can get power uh, to the satellite controller there. Um, for your satellite controller you've just got your main mains power button there so that turns it on. Just got to wait for it to liven itself up. Um, and then it'll come up with the search so there's the button just just beside it so press that one when I press it properly um, and then that'll automatically do it search for the the satellite system um, as it goes around um, when you've got your TV going you'll find it'll probably find a picture but go off it and then come back um, and generally they try to find the best reception they can get so they will move two or three times before they they stop moving. Um, once you're finished, you know, you, you want to move off or it's getting a bit windy and you want to put the, the dish down, you can just hit the close button there um, and it'll say shut down yes or no. So you hit the top one beside it, beside the yes, and then that'll close the dish back down. Um, you, you can hear it on the roof moving. Once you hear it stop moving, you can then just come up and hit this power button and turn it off.